Lynn Scotch, Plover, Wisconsin, the Chris Klug Foundation Donor Hero Award. Well, I'm not sure. I'm, there's certainly there's something like 7,000 live kidney donors every year, so they, the foundation would have had plenty of people to choose from. Uh, we are very honored to have received it, and um, part of what we do now, surprisingly, in our retirement, because it was totally unexpected, is we try to raise awareness wherever we go uh, about the, the need for living kidney donation, living liver donation. Just because we were so surprised to find out that 13 people die every day waiting for a kidney in this country, and it, that just seemed appalling to us. And we thought, gee, we, we seem like we're, we thought we were pretty knowledgeable people, you know, pretty with it people, and we had no clue. And uh, if we didn't know that, we figured there's lots of other people that don't know that, and maybe they just need to hear it. Um, so the donation itself is really rather insignificant um, physically. We have no residual restrictions other than not being able to take ibuprofen and other drugs in that family. Not a big deal at all. Um, the other aspects are very rewarding. Um, Mark and I both used the National Kidney Registry voucher program, which means that our kidneys went to the best possible match across 103 transplant centers in the U.S. For a recipient, having the best match is extremely important because the organ will typically last longer, have less chance of rejection, and they'll need to take fewer immunosuppressant drugs, which they do take for the rest of their lives. And those drugs can be very hard on the rest of the body. Um, so that best match aspect is very important. The voucher program enables a donor to name somebody or several somebodies who may need a kidney now or may need a kidney, kidney in the future that voucher gives them priority on the wait list for a living kidney donation. And a living, a living donor um, kidney typically lasts about twice as long as a deceased donation, which again is very important. If you can, if you can get by with one transplant instead of two, that's a big deal. So um, once, once we learned about the voucher program, we knew that we wanted to use that because it in effect doubles the gift. Two people are receiving a kidney, even though you're giving one. And we have developed relationships with both of our voucher recipients, as well as the recipient of Mark's liver, uh, which happened um, last year in May. And that's very rewarding. Kidney disease, you have dialysis, and that can sustain you until you get a transplant. Liver doesn't have anything like that. And uh, babies born with the kidney, the liver disease that um, his recipient had typically die at about a year old if they don't get a transplant. She was nine months old, um, so she was running on borrowed time. And we saw her within a few days of the transplant. Her parents already said they couldn't believe the difference, and now she is a little spitfire, just going for life full bore. I would say if you have any interest at all, get evaluated. It's going to be the best physical you've ever had in your life. And until you know whether you're medically eligible to donate, there's not really a decision to be made. Um, also, transplant centers are extremely protective of their potential donors. They aren't going to move you forward in the process if there's any indication at all that it would not be a good thing for you down the road, physically, medically. Um, and they give you, right up until the time you get your happy gas um, at the surgery doors, they are telling you, they're asking you repeatedly, do you still want to go through with this? Um, so you have plenty of opportunity to change your mind. And being a donor is not for everyone, but everyone can learn more about it and about the urgent need for living donors as well as deceased donors. Um, and if you just learn more about it, perhaps you will talk about it with others. Um, in casual settings, um, just because something piqued your interest. And somewhere down that row, just like the seven degrees of separation or whatever it is, um, that may resonate with somebody. We find almost everybody has some 
either they have a family friend, a family member, somebody that you know they know through school or work who um, has needed a transplant, and it's um, it's a lot more widespread than we ever realized. I would say thank you for the 20 years of work that you've done. Thank you for showing people that you can be a totally healthy individual, enjoying all of the the physical aspects um, as a transplant recipient, and thank you for making sure that other people are receiving a benefit and furthering the cause.